Thank you for your goodness. What a great God you are. Let us thank God as he has met with us in our different churches today. Let's thank God for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. What a great God you are. Let's thank God for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. Let's thank God for the manifestation of grace. This is the month of grace, the month of September. It's a covenant month with us. Let's thank God for grace. For God is able to make all grace abound unto us, and he will in this very month. O oh Lord our God, we magnify your holy name. We praise you. We exalt you, God of faithfulness. Let's thank God for the success of the victory nights. Lord, we bless you. We exalt and magnify thee. We thank you for what you did during this victory night. We thank you for the things you taught us during this victory night. We thank you for the impartation that we receive, manifestation of grace. Let us give God praise to these 892 days we have been praying. It looks like yesterday, but it's over two years now. It is only God who can strengthen a people to continue to gather daily. The Bible says, unless the Lord build the house, the laborers labor in vain. We thank God for the strength he has given to us. We thank God for the grace that he has shown us. We thank God for the mercy that he has extended to us during this period. We thank God for the resilience. We thank God for the love of God in the midst of us that binds us together. We thank God for the testimony of everybody. There's no one among us, everyone under my voice that God had not touched in one way or the other. Thank God for the prophetic spirit of God, this, the spirit of prophecy that is prevailing among us. Lord, we bless you. We magnify thee. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' anointed name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Shall we lift up our right hand to heaven as we open this service by reading Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and all that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and pure heart. Who does not lift up his heart to what is false, nor swear deceitfully? He shall receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob, Silla. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. Let's take together Psalm 145 with thanksgiving. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. I will extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your sins will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. 
Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lift up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hands and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. We we'll take our opening hymn together, praise the King of Glory.
Yes, all these works are praising. I just uh, want us to reflect on what the Lord has taught us in our various churches today. I want us to reflect on the prophetic word that God has spoken to us concerning the month of September, especially the first seven days of September. I want us to uh, reflect on this prophetic word since the first of September. The Lord has been speaking really since the last Friday of, of August. And let us just thank God, the Holy Spirit, for revealing to us mysteries that we do not know about our nation, about other nations in the world, and about our lives. Shall we just thank God for it? Oh, Father, we thank you, God, the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because of the prophetic spirit that you have been down upon us. We thank you, God, the Holy Spirit, for revealing to us. Jesus said, I have much to tell you that you can bear. But when the Spirit comes, he will reveal to you, tell you things that I want to reveal. And Jesus said, there are many things I want to reveal, but the Holy Spirit will reveal unto you all things. He will take out of what is mine and make it known to you. John chapter 16, verse 12. And we thank you, God, the Holy Spirit, for revealing to us about our government, the United Kingdom, who will rule next. What are the plans before her? And what will God do? What we should pray for her? We thank you for revealing to us about Nigeria. The plans of God, the plans of the enemy, and decree to sabotage the devil so that God will prevail over the nation. Thank you for revealing to us our personal lives. Lord, the first seven days, it shall be settled. It shall be completed. Our aspirations shall be met, you said. You said the things that we have laid hands on, that we have not finished, shall be finished. And we believe it. We started to say, thank you, Lord, for your love for us. The voice of God is rare in our time, but not with us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us every day. And the Holy Spirit speaks through us in our prayers every day. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege. It's a great privilege from God to be called children of God. It's a great honor from the most holy one to be called his saints on earth. We thank you. Sainthood that we did not earn because of any social action, but we earn it by the reason of, this, of the cross of Calvary, the death of his son for us. It's not because of our education that we became saints, but Lord, we glorify thee. We exalt you. Saint everyone, we magnify thee. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for giving your life. We thank you, Son of God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We bless you. We thank you. What a mystery God you are. We salute you, the champion of heaven. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' anointed name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. I'm going to call Pastor Tyler now to, to uh, introduce us to the leaders, and I'll get back to you shortly. Pastor Tyler, please. Thank you very much, Apostle. I'd like to invite Dickness Wendy to start for Queen's Dickness. Please unmute your device. Good evening, church. My scripture is coming from Acts chapter 16, and I will read from verse 6 to verse 9. And it reads, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Faragai and, and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Messiah, they tried to enter Bethania, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Messiah and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia, of Mac Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. 
Now, if we put into perspective what happened to Paul and his companions with what we could similarly go through, we could see such a situation as a diversion of plan or even a denial of a good thing that we're trying to achieve. However, we must see every situation, we must see that every situation does not always end in a failure or at the end, or it's not always the end of the road. And during the convention, Apostle spoke about how God can command your enemy to pursue you because he wants to put an end to that enemy. So we want to thank God for the Holy Spirit who teaches us all things and directs us in the way that we need to go. And I also want us to pray that after, even after the Holy Ghost Convention, we are sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives and that the mysteries of heaven will be revealed to us and direct us in this month of grace. Let us begin to pray. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who leads us and guides us in all things. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will guide us in the month of grace as we pass through every situation that we may have before us, oh God. We will not go into any situation thinking that you, Heavenly Father, have put a robe Block in our lives because it is not your way. You said you have got plans to prosper us and not to harm us. You give us the plan for hope and a future. So Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that now that we've been impacted and we have the spirit of God living in us, let our visions, Heavenly Father, reveal your plan to us in the mighty name of Jesus. In these seven days, oh God, where we wait with a heart of expectation of what you will do for us, oh God, help us, oh God, to see from heaven what we need to do where we need to go direct our steps in the mighty name of Jesus oh Lord you spoke in Isaiah 30 21 you said whether you turn to the right or to the left your ears will hear a voice behind you saying that this is the way walk in it father help us to walk in your way help us to walk by your voice and by your spirit and not by what we think not by what we feel not by what men say but what your spirit heavenly father is saying to us let us enter into the the realm of visions in this month oh god some of us have been praying and asking lord visit me let me see let me hear father begin to visit us in this month in the mighty name of jesus you said god's divine power has given us everything that we need for life lord your divine power let it become enacted in us in this week in the mighty name of jesus and as we move into the month of september let your grace be sufficient for us because lord we know you're leading us heavenly father in every plan that that we have in everything, Lord, that we have put before you as requests. Lord, we will not see anything that comes our way as a stumbling block, but we will we will we will pray and we will ask you, Lord, to direct us in everything that we do so that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Take us tomorrow, please. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take my prayer point from 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'll read from verse 3. It says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. So this is the scripture apostle has taught us from for the past few days. And he said, the, the scripture says God's divine power has given us everything we, we need for life. But it tells us that we get through this through our knowledge of Christ Jesus. And then from verse five tells us the qualities we need to have so that we are not unproductive in our knowledge of Christ. So I want us to pray for ourselves. God has given us, brought us so much knowledge and wisdom in the past few days. The onus is on us not to forget the things that we have heard. And we're going to ask the Lord to help us 
Each day we spend time in prayer. Each day we spend time in the word of God. We want to know Jesus so that we can access this divine power that is in us. We need this knowledge. And we're going to ask the Lord to help us to increase in this virtue every single day that our knowledge of Christ will not be in ineffective or unproductive. Let us open our mouth and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, Lord, for you said your people perish for lack of knowledge. But we thank you, Lord, for in this season, Father, you've opened our eyes to see mysteries in your word. Father, you've opened our eyes to see the things that you have prepared for us, O God, because you want us to be victorious in this life. So we ask you tonight, Father, in line with your word. You said your divine power has given us all things that we need for life and godliness. So we ask you, Father, Lord, help us so God, to access these things that you have provided for us, so God, in the heavenly realm, through our knowledge of Christ. In the name of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, we ask you, oh God, even as we spend time in your word, give us understanding. Let the eyes of our hearts be enlightened that we may know the hope to which you have called. King of kings and Lord of lords, that your sons and daughters will begin to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. For indeed, we are in the last days. And you said, oh Lord, that creation is waiting. They are crying and groaning for us to manifest. Lord, that in this season will begin to manifest. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that causes our heads to be bowed down, my God and my King, we ask let your light shine, oh God, that we know and understand that we have no reason to have our heads bowed down. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your people begin to work in power. We begin to work in authority. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we begin to take charge of the things, oh God, you've put under our control. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask, oh Lord, in this season, Father, Lord, as your word comes, Lord, remove ignorance from our hearts and our minds. In the name of Jesus, every belief system that we've held on to, Lord, that has prevented your word from cleansing us. Father, to now we ask, let it be taken away. In the name of Jesus, for the Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and we thank you, Father, as your word has come, oh God, and it keeps coming to us every day, Lord, that light is shining in our minds. And we ask, so oh God, as your light shines, let darkness flee, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus. For Satan is satisfied when the children of God are ignorant. But Lord, we thank you because we are not ignorant, O oh Lord, of Satan's devices. And we are not ignorant, Father Lord, of your work, O oh God, in our lives, Father Lord. We ask you tonight, every single day, Lord, help us to tap into the divine power, which is your Holy Spirit in us, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, in our place is of work, my God and my King, we begin to arise and shine over for our light has come and your glory rises upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that we are the head and not the tail. You said we shall be on top and not at the bottom. You said, oh God, we'll lend to nations that will borrow from none, but Lord, it comes through our knowledge of you. So we ask you, Christ Jesus, in everything that we do, Father, help us, oh Lord, to place, oh God, great emphasis and importance in our knowledge of you, Father, Lord, that will be people of the word and prayer will be people of the word and prayer father lord i will hunger for your word more than anything oh lord jesus that lord you open our eyes oh god to answer us to mysteries oh god in your word the things oh god that we are crying about father you've given to us so we ask you tonight father lord and in this season lord open our eyes oh lord to tap into the things you've given us oh god in the spiritual realms in the mighty name of jesus and we ask oh father lord you said oh god we should act to our faith goodness lord we ask every single day father you've done your part. Help us, oh God, to do our parts in the name of Jesus. Lord, that this virtue will have it, oh God, in increasing measure. And you said if we do this, Lord, it will not be unproductive or ineffective in our knowledge of Christ. Father, we ask you to help us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Put in us, oh God, a hunger for your word. Father, Lord, everything that causes us to be distracted, tonight, Lord, we banish in the mighty name of Jesus. You have revealed to us what we need to do. Father, Lord, we will not deceive ourselves. But the Bible said, if we read your word and don't do what it said, we deceive ourselves. But we don't want to be people who deceive ourselves. We want to be people, oh God, who take your word and run with it and see the manifestation of your word. For you are not a man that you lie, nor the son of man that you change your mind. And Lord, as we do this, we ask, oh God, the things you have promised, oh God, they begin to happen in our lives, oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Take your nice and please. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, church. I'll take my reading from <clears throat> Acts chapter 16, verses 30 to 32. He then brought 
them out and ask, sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his household. Amen. Yes, we have received the Holy Spirit. God has sent us and he gave us one instruction that we should go out and speak the word and to make disciples. This is the greatest command Jesus gave us when as he was living, going. We're going to pray and ask first for our siblings, our relations who do not know God. From here, we saw the jailer now asking the, uh, Peter and the, the apostles, what shall we do to be saved? Say which they should repent. So we're going to pray and ask God, as he has endowed us with the grace, the Holy Spirit to decree and to speak into life, into situations. We're going to ask and pray that God, what whoever our relations are, we're going to speak into their life for their salvation. Then we go out into our workplaces, our places of work. Shall we begin to pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that Lord you've given unto us. We thank you for the impartation, O oh Lord, of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, the gifting, so Lord, that you've deposited in us. Father, you gave us the greatest command that we should go out and make disciples, Lord. Yes, you have given us this, the giftings, Father, not for us for alone, but Father, for the edification of the church, for so winning, for miracles, because when the, the apostles received the Holy Spirit, Father, they went out preaching, and there were signs and wonders, the demonstration of power in their midst. Father, it is our turn, Lord. We pray and lift up our siblings, our, our brothers, neighbors, friends, oh Lord, who do not know you. Father, in before you, Lord, we pray for their salvation. Lord, it's for this reason you have called us into this family, Lord, uh, that we shall be the watchmen over this household, oh Lord, and these families. Therefore, Father, I lift my siblings, my in-laws. Father, who do not know you, who have not accepted you as their, their Lord and Savior, Lord, the Lord, they will turn their hearts to you, oh Lord. Uh, you will convict their hearts, any stony heart, any unforgiveness, unbelief in their heart. Father, tonight, oh Lord, I leave them before you, oh Lord, and I pray thee that your power, your, your mercy will call them, Lord. For Father, if you do not call any man, no man can come before you. Therefore, Father, we make intercession, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, over our families, over our children who have been uh, they, they, they diverted their causes, Lord, we pray for them, oh Lord, any relationship, people in our workplaces who do not even want to hear the word, Father, this is the end times, oh Lord. We ask, Father, that Lord, the impartation you've given unto us, we shall demonstrate, Lord. You feel you've put your word upon our lips and your spirit upon us, Lord. That will not depart from us, Lord. Father, we pray tonight that, Lord, your presence, your power, oh Lord, we shall declare things and it shall be established. Therefore, Father, we pray, oh Lord, let that grace, oh Lord, over my family, Lord, be established, Lord, that we will walk in your ordinances. Father, we will, their heart is and when the word is preached to them, Lord, every stony heart, Lord, will be broken, Lord. As the sower went to sow, Lord, yes, some fell on the on stony ground, and some fell onto uh, the soil, which gave birth to sister uh, 30 free, uh, fruits and 60 and 100 fruits, oh Lord. We pray that, Lord, as your word comes forth out of our mouth, onto our families, onto wherever we stand to declare your word, Father, it shall bear fruit, Lord. There shall be demonstration of your power in the name of Jesus Christ. The hill, the sick shall be healed, the lame shall walk, the blind shall see. Lord, because we of the power you have uh, deposited in us. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, uh, guide us, Lord, and strengthen us. That Lord, wherever we go, even in our places of work, Father, they are hostile to, to, to the to hearing of your word, Lord. We shall be uh, we shall have the love, the peace, and the grace to speak your word, Lord, to those souls who are yearning to have salvation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Father, as we go forth into our places of work from tomorrow, Lord, we pray that, Lord, that you will order our steps and our directions into meeting people who are destined for salvation, Lord, in this entire
times, oh Lord, that Father, we will speak your word unto them, that they will receive you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my God and my King. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father, for revealing unto us things that are about to happen from now into the year 2023. Father, therefore, Lord, the hardship that will come upon these nations, Lord, uh, Father, we pray, Lord, that your grace, oh Lord, will draw men unto yourself. You will draw men unto yourself as we speak to them, Lord. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the kingdom of hell shall be depleted, Lord, and their souls will come believing in you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. My God and my King, we give you praise. The Father, your church, oh Lord, Christ faith and globally shall be filled up, oh Lord, with souls, oh Lord, that will, will, will come before you, yearning to hear your word. They will come looking for Christ's faith tabernacle wherever it is established in the globe, oh Lord, asking that let us go into the house of the Lord where we shall be taught, oh Lord, the word of God. Father, they will come in, Lord, Lord so that as your word goes forth to them, Lord, there shall be power and manifestation behind your word, Lord, as we speak, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise and give you glory. We give you honor. Be thou exalted, our King, Lord. Lord. We thank you, Father, for for you are watching over your word to perform, and we thank you, Father, your word is settled, for your thought concerning us are good and not evil. Father, for this reason, you send your only begotten Son to come and die for us. Father, we thank you, not for us alone, but unto all those who are not are yet to be saved. Therefore, Father, our cry tonight, that souls shall be drawn to you, Lord. You will come men to yourself as we witness, O oh Lord. Give us the grace, O oh Lord, to witness in boldness, in faith, and in truth, Lord, that your name alone shall be shall be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' holy and anointed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. I like to invite our Father, the Lord. Yeah. Amen and amen. I just felt that um, I will invite uh, Pastor Josiah to lead us in a prayer and then I will come in now. As a tie of solid up. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Pastor Josiah, please unmute your device. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us open our Bible to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. I will read a few verses, but my verse that I will be praying from is verse 18. But for us to have good graphs, let's go to verse 15. Then Nama and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servants. The prophet answered, as surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mold can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God but the Lord. Verse 18. Say, but May the Lord forgive your servant for what, this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Ramah to bow down as he is leaning on my arm, and I have to bow there also, when I bow down in the temple of Ramah, may the Lord forgive your servants for this. What Naaman is saying, it's very, it's a common error. You follow, you associate yourself, you follow people to various places. In this case, Naaman was in a temple where they worship other gods with his master, and his master will lean on him. And because of that, he also will bow down reluctantly or willingly because his master is leaning on him and they will bow to unknown God. When he was delivered from this situation, he remembered that all those visits were sinful to God. And he asked Elisha that for this one thing, 
But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. When my master enters the temple of Ramon to bow down, and he is leaning on me, on my arm, and I have to bow there also. When I bow down in the temple of Ramon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. I want us to pray that whatever association that we may have, that's similar to this. In this case, Raman was going to a temple with his master. He cannot say no. And when the master is leaning on him, he, also, he was also forced to lean and bow to the unknown God. Whatever association that we may have entered into or relationship or anywhere that we may have visited, any area that we must we may have gone with the friends that is sinful before God. Tonight, I want us to plead for mercy. We ask God to forgive and cleanse us from all those unrighteous relationships, unrighteous acts, or the places that we have been to that is not right before God. We ask God tonight, cleanse us and have mercy. Let us pray. Our God and our King, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Almighty God, for you are God of second chance. Thank you, Lord Almighty God, for giving your people second chance to repent. Because you do not want anyone to perish, but for them to repent of their sins. We ask you, Lord Almighty God, to cleanse us and have mercy on us tonight. Forgive us, O Lord, anywhere that we may have gone to, Lord Almighty God, that is not right before you. Those things that we have done that is not right before you. All the visitations that we have made to places that you do not want us to go. Our God and our King, we plead for your mercy. We ask, O oh Lord, forgive us, O oh Lord Almighty God. Forgive us, O oh Lord Almighty God. All traditional things that we have followed, all native things that we have followed, whatever we call tradition and, and that we have bowed down to, Father, Lord, forgive. Have mercy tonight. Have mercy tonight. Cleanse us, O Lord Almighty God. Don't let this thing bring in us to us, O Lord Almighty God. This is a month that you said you are visiting us. Nothing, O Lord, of this should hinder us. Father, Lord, in heaven, cleanse us. Wash us clean, O Lord Almighty God. Thank you, Lord Almighty God, because you have fed us. Thank you, Lord my God. In Jesus, mighty and holy name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 My, this is interesting. Let's pray further on that very scripture. You know what uh, Pastor just reflected now on? You know, sometimes we make, we join people to in jokes that they make. And those jokes are derogatory to God. You have to think very wide. Some of us, as he has said, have been ensnared with what we call culture. And we do know that it's from the devil. Oh, this is how they do it. And we join them. And those things can bring on unexpected punishment upon, they do bring unexpected punishment upon God's sins. And we don't know where this uh, punishment comes from. But because we have associated with people when they did, when they got involved with customs that are contrary to God, is the origin of the such custom or the origin of such culture that really matters. And uh, because we have gotten involved with it, we have been, we have suffered some, some, some punishment. But now I want us to pray further on this. We know that God is saying to you clearly, you and I must take our stand for God regardless of whoever we are with. We must not allow the, the position of people to make us deny God and compromise with the devil. We must not be ashamed. So the next prayer we're going to pray from this is that, Father, grant me the boldness to say no. The Bible says, my son, when sinners entice thee, consent thou not. 
Grant me the boldness to speak out for Jesus everywhere, anywhere, anytime, regardless of what I may lose, regardless of what my brain may say I may lose, begin to pray and tell God. Empower us, O God, to say no to every influence that is contrary to God. If the devil come in such a divisive way, a man who said that there is no God but the God of Israel, and then he was pleading, he knew straight away, all the time he goes to the temple of Rimon, Rimon and bow, he's a sin. Nobody told him. He knew straight away. But yet he's asking for permission. Father, we pray. We pray that we will not bargain you for anybody. We pray that we will be bold to speak out against the devil, against the culture that is not of God. We pray that we will be bold to dissociate ourselves from everything that contaminates us. We pray for the spirit of boldness. We pray for the strength of the Holy Spirit, that we will not be ashamed of anything. When people try to lure us into sin, regardless of who they are, it will be an opportunity to preach the gospel to them. Father, fill our heart with boldness. Let such attempt, anytime that such thing comes, let it open joy in our heart to preach the gospel. And we will take our stand. We will not bow our heads to any God. We will not compromise with any culture that we know is worldly. We will not be dragged away into worldliness. We will take our stand in godliness in everything that we do. In Jesus' anointed name we are praying. Amen and amen. I also want to speak uh, further on the prayer before pastor's prayer, where we were led by uh, Deacon uh, Potiphar to pray for our loved ones. You know what came to my spirit is that call them by name. We have learned in my prophetic declaration, every loved one that you have that have gone away from God, anytime you pray for them, say, I call you Philip to surrender to Jesus. I speak to your spirit. Jesus is your God. You will serve Jesus Christ. I speak into your body. You submit to Christ. Prophetic prayer declaration like that is what we must speak into them. You know, one thing that the Holy Ghost taught us very much in this convention into this time is to make declaration, to make declaration and speak those things to be that, that were not. Speak against the devil. Speak to the heart of man. Speak to the spirit of man and call them what they are supposed to be and call them out of the snare of the devil. And that's the kind of prayer of faith we pray for those our loved ones. The final thing I want to share with you that is this. In the first prayer that was prayed, are you not amazed? <laughs> you know, it's Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to verse 10. Let me read it again and be very careful to listen. Paul, I read from Acts 16, verse 6. Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit for what? Preaching the word. I think anytime we want to preach the word, Holy Spirit will let you preach it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, this is what God is saying to you. Not every pulpit they invite you to come and share the word. You just carry yourself and go there. No, 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 no. Why should Holy Spirit prevent them or keep them away from preaching in Asia? It's not where Holy Spirit wants them to preach. So we must be very, very careful. Not every meeting they call you to come that you go when it comes to church, church, such meeting. You must pray. And of course, I tell you this, if somebody invites you to a church meeting and the pastor is speaking rugby, just pack your bag and bag it and out. Out. You know, I wonder about some culture people do. One of the culture, they tell them to come and put money on the floor. Once you are blessed and they go away, carry your Bible, you have received the word already. Go, live at that spot so that they know that you are living because of, and if they ask you, why are you living? Tell them that this is a culture culture. Straight away. Or oh, where they are leading you in prayer, they preach good sermon and stuff, and then they say to you to pray to a particular thing, you know, or pray through one medium, maybe pray to a stick or pray to an iron or pray to a staff or pray to, uh, uh, you know, show, just say to them that I had enough of this. This is not of God. This is idol worshiping. And let them know it. 
Don't be, don't, you see that this, this, these prayers are connected. What Pastor Jesus led us to pray? They, they, to fear man at the, at the, at, and they disregard God is a very grievous sin. We mustn't do that. And I told you about those who also blow ram horn and they believe that when they blow it, angel is coming. All those things are from the devil. Devil introduced those things to the church because Jesus didn't give it. Apostles didn't give it. So who can give it but the devil? But the devil. But the church of God must be very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. It is only in the name of Jesus you pray. And it is faith in the name of Jesus that works, not faith in the blowing of rams, horns. Dead ram for by the by the by the way. So you must be very very careful, and we must recognize this. Holy Spirit to prevent them from preaching in Asia. In Asia, now second thing is when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, or Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus <laughs> will not allow them. Two, and you know, you need to understand, it's not talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit he first spoke about, second is Spirit of Jesus Christ. How could they call his Spirit the Spirit of Jesus? He appeared unto them. That's the only way they can know the Spirit of Jesus. He appeared unto them. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ will not allow them. Interesting. Why? Because God has an assignment. God has an assignment. Sometimes we are detracted by activities and we lose the assignment of God. Every one of us have been taught seriously during the past two weeks and we have encountered the Holy Spirit so much. We must be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Seek God first and then move. So what happened? During the night, Paul had a vision. What does Paul do in the night? Prayer. <laughs> So why did you why did you stop us from preaching in Asia? But Jesus, why did you appear to us and he didn't let us preach in Bithynia? So he went to a vision and he saw a man of Macedonia. Now, those of us who are JT, remember, Jesus said to me, evangelism team, and you know, evangelism and stuff like that. We must know that we must prayerfully uh, 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 receive direction concerning our outreaches. We don't just go to a city and go and preach. We must pray about it. Not every city is right for salvation. So that we don't, we don't put all our energy into something that will not profit. You know, when I was reading this, you know, it, it really struck my mind. What they are saying is very true. During the night, Paul saw a vision. And then of a man of Macedonia. And if you read further, it talks about the Lydia. It says on the Sabbath in verse 13, on the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. Where is Paul looking for? A place of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sat down and began to speak to the woman who had gathered there at the place of prayer. One of those listening was a woman called Lydia, a dealer in purple. This is church planting. Church planting was the Holy Ghost led. It must be Holy Ghost led. Not just gather people and go and start a church somewhere and stand, say you are planning church. It must be Holy Ghost led. If you look at what happened here, one of the listening, one of the, those listening was a woman named Lydia. What is it about Lydia? A dealer of purple clothes. She has jobs. She has work that is doing. She was not a jobless woman from the city of Titara who was worsh a worshiper of God. She was a woman of career. And she was a worshiper of God. In this case, she was a businesswoman. But she was a worshiper of God. And God has been seeing her heart, just like Cornelius in three chapters of gold, a way which is 13, uh, te chapter 10. She was a worshiper of God. We must look for our Lydia in every city that we go to plant churches. We must look for our, our Cornelius. But these things can be attained by prayer. I want us to be guided with prayer. I want us to pray, pray, pray here and move. I don't want us to be jiving about aimlessly. I want us to pray, pray, pray. Before you go to evangelism, you must pray throughout the week and then move so that God will lead you to the lost sheep of Israel. He will lead you to those who have been prepared for salvation. Who say we pray, pray, pray and move into it so that we can hit the whole city and get people saved. And this is very, very 
interesting to me when they were reading it. Also, if you look at the book of uh, Acts chapter 8, you will read about, in verse 26, you will read about collaboration of angels and the Holy Spirit. In that uh, Acts that I read to you now, we read about the collaboration of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, chapter 16, verse 6. And then in chapter 8, verse 26, it says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, and that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of, of the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. You know, this man came all the way from Ethiopia on caravan to come and worship God in Jerusalem. You know, he's a great worshiper. Verse 29 says, the spirit told him, the first one was angel said to him, go to that road. Now, when he saw the man, the Holy Spirit told him, go to that chariot. Combination of Jesus, Holy Spirit, and angels. Now we're going to pray the Lord in this month of September, give me an encounter. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I want encounters of God. I want encounters with God. Give me an encounter, Lord. Encounter of the Spirit of Jesus. Encounter of the angels of God. Encounter of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let me have encounter. Let me have encounter. Drive my soul into the realm of your Spirit, O oh God. Give me encounters that are divine. Let me have encounters. Let my eyes open. Tell, pray against every spirit of nightmares. Whenever we lay down on our bed, that God will visit us, that Holy Spirit will visit us, that Jesus will visit us, angels will appear unto us. No more nightmares in your dream. No more nightmares in your dream. No more disturbing dreams in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is time for dreams to change. It is time for vision to be given. It is time for understanding to be given that we receive in the name of our Lord Jesus. If if uh, uh, Paul can, can, can hear the Holy Spirit and see the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and in a vision, he, he saw Jesus, and, and, and Philip can see in a vision. Let us ask God. Let us ask God. He had a vision. Paul had a vision, and he saw the man of Macedonia. Open my eyes, O God. Direct me by your spirit. Open my ears, O God. Direct me by your word. Direct me by your voice. Let me hear your voice distinctly in the name of Jesus. I seek you in this month of September. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord. Open my ears, Lord. Let me have encounters of you. 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 Oh, sovereign Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me have encounters of you, my God. Lord, let me have encounters. Give us encounters. Give us encounters. Give us encounters, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, that your name be exalted. We thank you, sovereign Lord. We bless your holy name. What a blessed God you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' anointed name we are praying. Amen. Let me say this. Let your heart be saturated by this. This is what we should be seeking. These guys are men like us, human beings like us. They are just like us. You know, when we talk of people like Elijah, sometimes you, you look at somebody say, highly anointed. What about Philip? An ordinary man like you and I. But these guys sought God. What about Paul? Ordinary man like you and I. They really sought God. And that is what we are going for. Right in this month of September, the Lord will surprise you. I told you, God told me that we are the last jokes of God. God will use you to confound the knowledge of the world. How God will bless you, no man will be able to calculate it. No man will be able to. When God blessed Obedidon, it took only three months, shift, and the whole nation knew him. Something from God will happen to you. Some great good things will happen. At the rising of tomorrow, you will begin to have encounters of God. So. Be very, very uh, courageous and uh, be encouraged by the prayer tonight. Now, shall we just break bread? I read from the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse twenty-three. What a blessed God we serve! He's getting more excited. 
Lord, we thank you for England tomorrow because a new government will come tomorrow and your mercy will be upon her. Father, you will grant our prime minister a new one, knowledge, wisdom to crush these um, bills of, of energy that is going haywire. She will take steps that will beat the imagination of everybody and that will put the whole nation back into a comfortable position. Then you will give her knowledge to, to, to crash the um, interest rates that is intending to continue to increase every month. Those are the two things we ask you. And Lord, thank you because you will do it in Jesus' name. Now I read from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. Lord, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread, this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we pray? Our God and Father, we thank you for the privilege of partaking in your body and in your blood. We thank you for the cleansing power that comes from the blood of Jesus. And we bless and glorify your holy name for the resurrection power, healing power that is provided in your blood. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We pray, O oh God, that as we celebrate this, you will grant us the grace and sustain us till the day that you will come again and we shall eat with you in your Father's kingdom. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ was broken for you. Take this remembrance that Jesus died for you and be thankful. The body of Christ was broken for you. Take this remembrance that Jesus died for you. Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken. Blessed be your holy name. Pass it around your family and the air together. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary. Thank you for the suffering you went through, Lord. Help us not to waste the cross. As we have prayed today, that we will be defenders of the cross. Strength from you, O God, to push forward in you. Strength to pray in season and out of season. Father, strength to love you. Lord, we receive it by this communion tonight. A strength that never faints. Ability to execute all you are put in our heart. Thank you, Lord. And healing for everyone that was sick. In Jesus' holy name. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. Take this remembrance that Jesus died for you on the front. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. Take this in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And they drank together. You can bow your head and just pray. Commit your ways to the Lord this week in light of the promise that God made for this month.
Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and honor and praise. We magnify thee, O oh God. Lord, I commit all your sons and daughters, including myself, to your hand. Let your fire surround us this week. God, the Holy Spirit, send your fire into our body. Send your fire into our soul. Send your fire into our mind. Purify our heart by the blood of the Lamb. Help us, our helper. Strengthen us, the Almighty One. Throughout this season, we pray, Lord, that our feet shall not stumble. We pray for strength in our weaknesses. We submit to you, Lord, our inadequacies, that you will make us perfect and make us whole. Deliver us during our sleeping time. Every spirit of hell that go to human sleep, and afflict them or disturb them. When they are sent to us, let your fire surround us. Enable our spirit man, strengthen our spirit man not to do anything that we will not do in our consciousness, that you will empower our spirit, that we shall be more powerful when we are sleeping than when we are awake, in the name of Jesus, so that we can be truly in your hand, O oh God, the Holy Spirit, and we will not be afflicted by the wicked one. And grace us with boldness and faith that we may declare your truth and your name. In anticipation of the great thing you will do this week, we really bless you. The sick shall be made whole. The barren shall be fruitful. Businesses will prosper. Those in jobs shall be exalted and elevated. The glory of heaven shall descend upon us. Our body shall be delivered from weariness and weaknesses. We shall be strong in our bones. We shall be strong in our flesh. Exuberance shall fill our hearts. We shall be successful in all our ways. Every day shall be another exciting day. So shall it be for all of us. And so it is. In Jesus' holy and anointed name, you have called this one the month of grace. Abundant grace we receive in the name of Jesus. Abundant grace we receive in the name of Jesus. Abundant grace to fulfill God we receive in the name of Jesus. Father, our love for you will not grow cold in this week and in this month. Your name shall be exalted. Everything that people have been procrastinating from the beginning of the year, they cannot do, that they have not been able to do. These seven days, I call them to manifestation. Before the end of seven days, it shall be done and you will arise and you will fulfill that which God has put in your heart and complete that which you have begun. Exuberance will come back to you. Zeal will come back to you. Joy and excitement shall decorate you. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, because you have answered us as we have asked in Jesus' anointed name. Amen and amen. Stretch your hand before the Lord. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May God send you help from his sanctuary, and grant you support from Zion. May God remember all your sacrifices and accept your bond offering. May God give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will all shout for joy where we are victorious and we lift up our banner in the name of our God. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, may he open the book of remembrance concerning you and answer all your requests. May the God of Bethel, who appeared unto Abraham and unto Jacob at Bethel, may he reveal himself to you, even in this season. In Jesus' holy and anointed name we are praying. Amen and amen and amen. Pastor Tyler, please, announcement. Thank you very much, Apostle. I'd like to warmly welcome anyone who's joined us online for the very first time. We would request that you please send us an email to admin at cftchurches.org and let us know that you've joined today. Please include the details of the country and indeed the city you've joined us from. And we will put you, keep your name and your details on our database for the purposes of keeping you abreast of the programmes um, of Christ's Faith Tabernacle. In particular, 
if we are at any point having a crusade or an outreach in the nation where you are, we'd certainly be reaching out to you in advance. And also would be an opportunity for us to get a very good feel um, for where the Lord would have us introduce people to each other if they're not um, if they're not already back attending a Bible believing church where they could come together to help and support each other on a local basis as well and the Lord bless you richly I'll also like to remind um, the women that we do have a women of rare destiny meeting on Thursday at 7 30 on this platform otherwise we've got daily meetings prayer sessions 9 p.m. on a daily basis. And um, of course, on Wednesday, we've got Bible study, which would start at 7 p.m. Um, and then our prayer session is combined on the day. The Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I'd like to hand back over to the Apostle. Sir. Yes, thank you, Pastor. We are going to lift up our right hand to heaven as we bring him into a close by reading from the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, 20 and 21. Shall we? Now, may the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, shall we take the general grace? Read the general grace of somebody. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We will take our closing hymn there shall be chance of blessing. It will fall in your house.
It shall be unto you according to your confession.